It has been quite an interesting week, let me tell you. The Arena Bowl happened inside of a mall. And, well, Billings won the Arena Bowl. What can you say? Ball control? Good stuff. You know, yeah, there was some penalties here and there for both teams, you know. But, um, you know, Jake Medlock got a little banged up. Trevon Schwartz, you know, you know, he, he, he played. You know, Darius Prince was kind of, you know, on and off ineffective. You know, the Albany in general was kind of on and off ineffective, you know, making some plays that were not ideal at the end of the day. But, hey. We have an Arena Bowl champion. We have the 33rd Arena Bowl champion, which is the Billings Outlaws. So, you know, yeah, Stephen Titus may have spent a lot of money or whatever trying to get, you know, Billings on out there, you know, to the mall in New Jersey. But it's, it's, at this point, it's whatever. I'm glad that it's all over, at least for now, you know. Yeah, Jeff Fisher and company are like, yeah, well, well, we're going to return stronger than ever in 2025, and whatever the AFL does, I'll be, you know, behind them, you know, 100% if things go well. If they don't go well this offseason, then you know I'm going to be ripping it to them, you know, come November and February when things really get rolling. So, yeah. Really good game between Albany and Billings, though. Really good game. Came down to the very, very end. Unfortunately, Firebirds, you know, got humbled. You know, they talked a lot of smack. You know, I'm sure Damon Ware is probably, you know, going to complain about the refs again on his or something like that. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. But I even said this on Friday, you know, but, I was jo- but I'm joking about that. Albany for the off season, you know, just continue to rebuild and reload. You know, they did. Well, I wouldn't say rebuild, but yeah, definitely reload. Uh, the Billings, you know, the guys that got them there, you know, certainly, you know, weren't the most interesting guys in the world, but hey, they played some damn good football. I'll say that. You know, really good game. Really good game. So yeah. The Chicago Rush posted something, so that kind of hints they're still trying to be a thing. Same thing with um, the Arizona Bandits. They're still trying to be a thing, too. I know I forgot to put it in the ticker, but who cares? Uh, Southwest Kansas Facebook is going a little crazy. I don't know why. Um, one of their posts just came off as just like, whoa, just why are you posting this? Just, just stop. Just don't even post this. Put this away. Put that back in the drafts, please. And then Heron O'Neill, the one thing he's doing, he's pondering his future. Will he coach next year? Who knows? That's up to him. You know, you know, I hope for the best for him. That's all I can do. That's all any of us can do. It's on him to see if he will coach for the Salina Liberty next season. And, you know, the AFL went through – Many, many hardships to end up with the eight teams that they had at the end, which, again, I'm still confused as to how I was right on that. But the AFL completed the season. You know, it was disgusting. It was tier three level shenanigans. But they completed the season with an arena bowl, with narrow nets inside of a mall. They did it. 2025, who knows what the season will look like. Who knows? Will they expand? Will they contract? Who knows? I do not care right now because it's over. The season's over. Once we're done here, not going to talk about the AFL again until at least November, you know, or unless something comes out of the next couple weeks about the league. So there's also all these conflicting reports and everything like that. Oh, well, Chris Chetty did this. You know, he did – he stole like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that, and then you know that had to get completely disproven. Not even, not even a day or two later, just insane stuff, you know. <laughs> I, I'm glad. I'm glad it's over. It was fun, you know, at points, but I'm glad it's over. So, yeah, the IFL still had to figure out some playoff stuff. So, yeah, Tulsa beat the brakes off of Massachusetts. So, 
you know, despite that, Quad City decided to, you know, not do good things, you know, completely, you know, completely mess up the bed and lose a game they shouldn't have lost, but it is what it is off a, you guessed it, kick six type situation. Just insane stuff. Jacksonville gets a very needed win, you know, in 5-11. Duke City today also got an absolutely insane win by just beating the brakes off of Northern Arizona. Now, again, if we were going by, you know, actual records, Northern Arizona wouldn't have been in any way. But the fact that Arizona, you know, won last night over San Antonio in in a good game, and then Northern Arizona gets the brakes beaten off of them by a Duke City team that just is looks hapless. You know, a hapless Duke City team that has just been very consistent all season long. They, they've been in games, but it's just like the roster, you know, just ain't completely there. So, yeah, Massachusetts will be the three out east. Quad City will be the four. But who was the one seed? Well, it's Green Bay. And it should be because they beat Frisco anyway. You know, conference record, you know, really shouldn't mean anything again, but whatever. It is what it is. So Northern Arizona gets knocked out, you know, not only because Arizona won, but because they lost. But, you know, the other seeds, you know, were kind of, you know, kind of fishy. You know, Bay Area locked up a seed. They locked up, they ended up locking up the number one seed with their defense yet again. Over San Diego, who will get the four seed and play Bay Area again next week. So they'll play Bay Area again next Saturday. And then Vegas finally ends Tucson struggling. So thank goodness for that. Billy back and company, you know, I mean, it's a cra- it's been a crazy year to say that man. A Billy Back coach team just did not look good. That's crazy talk. That's insane talk. You're, you can't be. You can't be serious. But oh yeah, it's serious. And it's over for Tucson. San San Antonio had a really good season. Sam Cashmanova should win the MVP of the IFL, but he's not. He's not going to. You know, he's got. He, he, he's got like seventy something touchdown passes to like less than ten picks. So he, he should. With the IFL MVP, that's what I'm thinking. In all honesty, Jacksonville, you know, again, great way to end the season with a kick six in a game that, you know, proved to be very consequential because now Quad City will take on Green Bay Friday night to start off the festivities for the playoffs. And then Saturday, Massachusetts and Frisco will hook up to start the doubleheader Saturday. And then later on that night, I believe it was 7 p.m. local. It, uh, that's that's what I heard on a broadcast that it's supposed to be 7 p.m. local for Vegas. So Vegas and Arizona will tangle yet again for the Saturday games. And then Sunday night, oh boy, we got some Sunday night football. Bay Area and San Diego hook up yet again. So it's going to be one hell of a playoffs. You already know who I'm rooting for. Those fighters to finally get over the hump, you know. I'm rooting for it, but honestly, we can, you know, I feel still kind of, you know, top heavy in a way, but it's just like the rosters are spread out. So that's my personal opinion, and that's kind of just the facts, really. You know, I feel definitely more spread out with the talent now with the amount of teams that's in the league, but it's still very much top heavy. So if we don't see a combination of Frisco, Green Bay, and Bay Area in the IFL National Championship. God, I wish it was the United Bowl. It's the United Bowl to me, damn it. But anyway, that's what we should be seeing in the IFL Championship game on August the 17th at 3 p.m. Central Time on CBS Sports Network. Oh, yes. I know the time. I know my times now. So, yeah. First round, going to be fun. Can't wait to watch it all. Again, I'm my root interest is in Frisco, and if we don't see a combination of Frisco Green Bay versus Bay Area, then what are we doing here? <laughs> and then the TAL, two weeks left in their regular season. 
Somebody decided to put up 99 points. Those, those man, them goats put up 99 points of the Iowa Woo. Poor Woo. One and six. Absolutely gross. But, I mean, they count up with 60 points. And then Dula, you know, for a while I thought Dula was going to shut out Ozarks, but ultimately the Lunkers scored 18. Dula got it. 51. And now the GOATs is 6 and 1. Lunkers 3 and 4. And the Harbor Monsters 4 and 3. And again, Iowa is 1 and 6. And Eau Claire, they will be called the Jammers. So that that logo and stuff is out, and it looks very, very good. This is this is the type of stuff that we should be living for. You know, that's the type of arena football naming we should be living for. Right there, something weird, something that doesn't make any sort of sense whatsoever. I like it. I like it. Speaking of the TAL, um, at some point, at some point, I'm gonna try and get the Ozarks guys going, you know, or you know, um, plans for up one again. They got derailed, so yeah, I gave up on that. I'm not gonna pursue that opportunity. I'm going to try and see what Ozark says. You know, and it'll be it over the next couple of weeks that I'll try this. You know, it'll be over the next couple of weeks before Arena Mania. So, yeah, we are really down into it. We got six games next week. Four games the week after that, because, you know, the semifinals of the IFL, the TAL semifinals, because all four teams qualify for the TAL playoffs. You got the TAL championship the week after that, and then the IFL national championship. So we got 12 games left in the season, man. We got 12 games. I think I'm doing my rap right. Yeah, we got 12 games left in the season. So I'm excited. I'm excited to join you all on this journey for the last four weeks of the season. So we got one more month of this, so let's make it count. Big Boy Sports is going to sign on out, and I will see you all next week at 9 o'clock Central Time or a little bit after 9 o'clock. It depends. You know how it is over here. We, 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 I kind of record stuff a little late to get all the information that's relevant for the videos and everything like that. So, again, that'll do it for me. Um, catch you all again next week at 9 o'clock Central Time on Sunday night after the San Diego Bay Area playoff game. Toodaloo. Congratulations to the Billings Outlaws one more time.